Hello everyone, I'm Justin Grego, and I'm a senior end user computing specialist solutions architect here at AWS. Understanding scaling policies is key to optimizing the costs of running your Amazon Workspaces pools environment, while at the same time ensuring a great experience for your users. In today's video, I'll cover the basic scaling concepts you need to understand when leveraging Workspaces pools. I'll start by providing a high level overview of how scaling works with Workspaces pools. Then I will review the main concepts and terminology of auto scaling, as well as the types of scaling policies supported by Workspaces pools. You'll then see a visual representation of how the different scaling types work to get a better understanding of how they affect your pool's capacity. And finally, I'll end this video by walking you through how to configure some basic scaling policies in the Workspaces pools console to meet a specific use case. With Workspaces pools, you create a pool of non-persistent cloud desktops shared across a group of users. You can then set scaling policies that allow the pool to auto-scale in size depending on how many users you expect or want to have using the cloud desktops at a given time. With Workspaces pools, you don't need to manage an image for every user as each user in a pool shares the same image. Every time they log into their session, they get a fresh image, making deploying updates and patches easy and efficient. Workspaces Pools has guardrails that set upper and lower bounds within which the scaling policies are allowed to work. When you configure your pool, you set minimum and maximum capacity values. Then, no matter what the scaling policies try to do, the pool will never grow or shrink beyond those limits. This prevents billing surprises by growing beyond expectations, while simultaneously always ensuring a minimum capacity level is met. These guardrails are not static and will cover how you can move these boundaries for given time intervals based on your usage patterns. Workspaces Pools supports three types of scaling policies. The first are scheduled capacity policies. These policies modify the minimum and maximum capacity values on a set schedule. These can be triggered once, at a set repeated frequency, or configured by a cron expression for ultimate flexibility. Capacity policies enable you to move those guardrails I just talked about on the previous screen. For example, this allows you to set minimum capacity values ahead of a morning logon rush to ensure sufficient resources are deployed to your users. Likewise, you can modify the minimum and maximum capacities to zero during your maintenance window to ensure all instances are recycled after an image update. The next policy type is a manual or step scaling policy. This type of policy scales your pools in or out based on one of three defined metrics. Capacity utilization compares in-use workspaces against available ones. That percentage then determines when to add or remove capacity. The available capacity metric monitors the number of available workspaces in your pool. You can use this metric to maintain a buffer in your capacity available for users to start streaming sessions. The last metric available is capacity errors which represents the number of session requests rejected due to lack of capacity. You can use this metric to provision new instances for users who can't start streaming sessions due to the lack of capacity. This is a completely reactive approach to scaling and will result in users waiting for new instances to provision before they can begin a session. Target tracking policies are the last type of policy available for workspaces pools. This is an advanced policy type that is only configurable via the AWS CLI or APIs. This policy type combines scale in and scale out policies into a single policy. When you create a targeting tracking policy, application auto scaling automatically creates and manages CloudWatch alarms that trigger the scaling policy. The scaling policy then adds or removes capacity as required to keep capacity utilization at or close to the specified target value. To ensure application availability, your pool scales out proportionally to the metric as fast as it can, but scales in more gradually. Think of it like this. You select a temperature and the thermostat does all the rest for you. We will now look at some example scenarios with various scaling policy types. These examples are illustrations designed to help you better understand the scaling concepts that we've been talking about today. In this first example, manual step scaling policies are configured to add two instances when capacity utilization is at or equal to 50%. 
and to remove one instance when capacity utilization falls below 25%. The minimum and maximum capacity values are set and not modified by any scaling policy actions and are represented by the purple and blue lines. The number of workspaces in the pool are then represented by the green line. At the start, the pool is at a steady state with the number of workspaces in the pool equal to the minimum capacity value. The assumption is that there are no users on the pool at this given time. As time passes by, a user starts a session which increases the capacity utilization and triggers the scaling policy to add two instances. After a period of time, the user logs off, and now that utilization has dropped below the threshold, the scaling policy triggers and removes instances from the pool, but it does not drop below the minimum value set. As time continues to go by, more users access the pool and trigger scale out actions, but once the maximum capacity value is met, the pool does not scale beyond that point. The next example demonstrates how scheduled policies work in conjunction with step scaling. The same scaling policies are configured from the previous screen. Two instances are added when capacity utilization is at or equal to 50%, and one instance is removed when capacity utilization falls below 25%. In addition, the scheduled policy reduces the min and max capacity value to zero during the night, and then increases the minimum and maximum before the morning log on rush. As you can see in the example timeline, the number of workspaces in the pool, again represented by the green line, grows and shrinks within the bounds of the minimum and maximum capacity values represented in purple and blue. Notice that at one point in time, the minimum and maximum capacity values are dropped to zero, which drops the number of workspaces in the pool to zero overnight. And then the minimum is set to a high number to ensure enough workspaces are brought online prior to the morning log on rush, before finally being allowed to scale back in as users begin to log off for the day. The final example outlines the process and CLI commands to set up a target tracking policy. The first step is to create a JSON configuration file that defines the parameters of the target tracking policy. Ensure that the service namespace is workspaces, that the resource ID is workspaces pools forward slash WS pool dash then the ID of your pool. You can get that ID from the workspaces pool console. The scalable dimension should be workspaces colon, workspaces pool colon, desired user sessions. You then define the target value for the policy to track and set the predefined metric type to workspaces average user session capacity utilization, all one world. Once you've created and saved your policy JSON file, launch the AWS command line session. Run the first command displayed in the black box to register the corresponding pool with the auto-scaling service. Again, ensure that the service namespace is workspaces. The resource ID matches the pool ID defined in the policy, that your initial minimum and maximum capacity values are where you want them, and that you are running the command line in the correct AWS region that the pool is deployed in. The last step is to implement the defined policy using the put scaling policy command referencing the path to the JSON file you created above. After that, auto-scaling takes the required steps to set up the CloudWatch metrics and will begin to take scaling actions to maintain the target capacity utilization level on your pool. We'll now hop over to the AWS Workspaces Pools console and walk through how to set up example two, which combines schedule and step scaling to reduce the pool to zero overnight to ensure everything reboots while also being ready to handle the morning logon rush. First, we give our pool a name and a description to identify it within our environment. For this example, we're gonna leave the default bundle and session settings in place. Here, we see the default minimum and maximum capacity values of one and five. Again, these are the bounds within which the manual scaling policies will work within. By default, a new pool has predefined scaling policies on it. The default scale up policy will add two instances if the capacity utilization is greater than or equal to 75%. I'm going to adjust this to be 50% to match our example, and then I'm going to rename it for clarity. Remember to click on the check icon to save the rename. The default scale up policy will remove one instance if the capacity utilization is less than or equal to 25%.
Here I am modifying this to simply be less than to match our example. And again, I update the name and then save it. At this point, we have a simple scaling scenario in place that will scale in and out between one and five instances at all times. We'll now expand upon this by adding scheduled scaling policies to adjust the minimum and maximum values depending on the time of day. I expand scheduled capacity policies and then select add new policy to begin building out uh, an example that matches example two. I'm setting the start date and time to the past so that the policy will take effect immediately. I'm keeping the minimum and maximum capacity at zero. And then for schedule, I'm selecting a cron expression. I'm then going to type out a, a cron expression here that will set up this policy to run every day at 2 a.m., no matter the day of the week, at which time it will set the new minimum and maximum capacity values. This will essentially scale the pool to zero, forcing a reboot of all the instances, ensuring that they're all in the latest image every night. Again, we're going to rename this for clarity and then select the checkbox to save that updated name. I'm then adding a second scheduled capacity policy. This policy will be set to run every day at 7 a.m., at which time it's going to set the minimum and maximum capacity values at a high value, thus forcing the pool to scale out ahead of time in order to meet a morning rush. In this case, we're going to be setting the minimum capacity to 5 and the maximum capacity to 10, and putting a cron expression that runs every day at 7 a.m to set these new minimum and maximum capacity values. By 7 a.m., the, the pool should be at a capacity of five. And then our other scaling policies that we had defined earlier will allow it to grow up to 10 as users begin to log onto the system. We're then adding a final policy, which runs every day at 10 a.m. after the morning rush, which will relax that minimum capacity value and allow the pool to scale in should there not be users on the system, thus optimizing our costs. We will keep the maximum capacity value at 10, though. So as users do come onto the system, they won't be limited by the fact that we've hit our maximum capacity. That's all it takes to set up this example policy on the pool to scale down overnight, scale out ahead of your morning rush, as well as grow and shrink to meet your actual usage throughout the day. On the screen, and in the description of this video, you'll find several handy links for more information on workspaces pools, auto scaling, as well as additional AWS end user computing resources. And with that, thank you. And I hope you found this video to be helpful as you begin your journey with Amazon workspaces pools.